afternoon from Northern Ontario. My name is Dave. This is Makiro Sign by Inskill Rail. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a catch up here. I'm going to throw in a, a, a time lapse of, of the laser cutter working and then we're going to proceed with uh, starting the first steps in building this factory that I've designed. So let's just go back one week and take a look at our little warehouse. So, you can see by the reflection in the windows that we've got uh, glazing in and the, uh, the packages of, uh, of graffiti uh, have come in. So there's, there's a piece of graffiti on the front of it. The whole thing is weathered and it's been sprayed down with a matte finish. And so the other things left here to do with this is to decide if I'm putting lights on the inside of it or not and or whether I'm putting lights at each of the doors which I think I am going to do and then when that's done we will seal up the back um, and spray paint the back uh, the back wall black uh, and uh, that should finish this this one off so what are we up to now well we're going to build a very large end scale factory now this factory in N scale, I have to write this down because I wouldn't remember it otherwise, uh, is uh, 262 feet long and 57 feet high in the N scale. That makes it, uh, in, if you're here in Canada with us, it's uh, 507 millimeters. And if you're uh, from uh, the US, it makes it 19 inches long, which is a long factory or a long building in any any scale but in uh, end scale that's a big building so I'm just gonna I'm gonna switch over to camera 2 here and uh, give you a look so what we have along here is a loading dock there will be uh, a track up against the building here and then there will be a track that goes inside the building over here Now, I said uh, last week that I was going to make it look like concrete, and this is how I'm going to do it. Just let me grab this, and now I'm trying to remember which one. This one. So I'm just going to separate this out a bit and show you how this is going to work. So we have the front of the building, and that's one layer of the building front, and then this. to get it all lined up is, uh, is there a better angle than that is the front of the building let me go back to uh, uh, camera 7 I think it is I just have to I always have to look at my screen to remember so you can see that we're going to have raised detail along the front uh, now uh, with all my scratch builds I have a concept in my head and I do a quick sketch of what I think it should look like and then I let the uh, the model talk to me <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous but <laughs> and I decide what more detail I'm going to put on so I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to put strips of styrene down the front here between each one of these panels going from the, the ground up uh, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to do that or not but it, it I think I think I may be doing that, uh, and uh, so what we're going to do today, and uh, this idea is not original to me. Uh, I follow a channel called Boomer uh, Diorama. Bo Boomer? Is it just Boomer or is it Boomer Diorama? I'm not sure. Anyway, I follow this guy. And he does a lot of scratch work. In fact, almost everything he builds for his layout is scratch built. Um, I'm not trying to emulate that because uh, some of the skills that this gentleman has are just amazing. So it's uh, it's not worth me trying to to uh, uh, to emulate him in any way, shape, or form. 
But one of the things he does do, and in most uh, most of his constructions, are much thicker uh, birch plywood. Uh, I think quarter inch or eighth of an inch. Uh, no, let's see. I think it's quarter inch, but I'm not sure. You'd have to go to his site to and check it out. What I'm using is basswood. It is as he looks for his calipers. One point four millimeters thick. And uh, let me just see if I can find that in inches for you. And in inches. I think it's one sixteenth. Uh, that's the walls. The floors are made from uh, thicker stock. Um, I want them to be uh, be structural, so that the the floors themselves are, uh, well, according to this, uh, thirteen uh, one hundred twenty eighth in the fraction uh, in um, millimeters it's a little easier that's why what else 2.5 millimeters approximately so what we're going to do and this is what I look at I get back to the actual <laughs> point of this video is that all of these need to be sealed so that So that when we start painting, well, that's interesting. Okay, let's flip that around. Oh, I see. Okay, there's a right way and a wrong way. <laughs> and this one is this far in. I'll find it later. <laughs> I believe there's some, there's one that goes here. And where's that one? Let me just double check. Now the beauty of the laser is that I can get very precise cuts and I can do repeats. Uh, so this week, I'm, you can see I've been busy. I've been busy working with the laser. The other thing that I, I did, and I, I said I was going to do it, I was I, uh, I had ordered an enclosure for my, uh, my laser and uh, it arrived uh, on Tuesday. I picked it up at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And by six, seven o'clock in, in the evening, I was done. <laughs> it, it was not what I was expecting. It was in lots of parts. And of course, all the assertions were in Chinese, uh, which didn't help at, at all. <laughs> so anyway, you'll see it in the, in the, um, in the time lapse. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray paint these with a clear matte finish to seal the wood. And after I've done that, and that stuff's dried, I'm going to sand it with about 400 grit sandpaper and then I'm going to give it a second coat and then I'm going to sand that again. I'm not going to show you me doing the sanding, I'm just going to show you do it, me doing this part of it so you can see what it looks like. So, uh, what I've got are these little painters stands for putting stuff on so you can paint it. So I can put put something in a on these little things and have it stand off the paper. But I put the paper down because 
typically if, when I'm doing this, I'm gonna, I, I do have a booth over there uh, for, for painting. Uh, <laughs> but to move every camera that's necessary and all the other nonsense here, uh, I've decided I'm gonna do it right here. <laughs> it's just as easy and it, you'll, you'll get the idea anyway. Uh, I may run off and get a mask, although I typically don't wear one and I know I should wear one, but you know what it looks like. It's, uh, yeah. Now, I, I think I got these from Amazon. And I got them specifically for doing stuff like this. Because... Maybe I'll just have to set that one. Yeah, hold on. Uh, they do snap together so that you can get the points pretty close to each other. So I should be able to do that. Oh, good, good stuff. I'll give you an overhead shot with it once I got them all, all lined up here. But I may not have enough to do everything. Uh, oh, no, no, I may, I may just... Hold on, Dave. on that one as well. Well, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do it a battery in the overhead camera. Well, well, <laughs> as always, I always forget something, don't I? I always forget something. So I'm, I'm just going to finish putting these up on these stands. Battery is just over on my other table. I have one one workbench that is dedicated just to uh, getting batteries done. I mean, I just hold those those ones. So, so give me a second. I'll be right back. a day where I don't forget things, but <laughs> at my age, <laughs> that's not likely. <laughs> so here we go. There we go. And uh, full full charge on the battery and uh, reach in here and turn it on. There we go. So what I, you could see here, I, I, it's not shooting the whole table because uh, I'd have to switch the lens out. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I may, the next time I do one of these on this table, over, I'll, I'll check that before we start. Anyway, stop yakking and keep working. So here we go. So all of these need to be, be sealed. And the reason for that is when you paint, the grain of the wood's going to come through. And so you want to make sure that you seal all the wood and then uh, go ahead and uh, and do your painting once you've got good sealed wood on the on, on this factory we didn't have to seal the wood because this is all covered in styrene so I don't need to uh, but if you have exposed lumber you want to make sure that you, uh, you seal it. And that'll make your paint jobs much, much better. So, I'm gonna lay this down. I've already shaken this up. I'm just gonna take my glasses off. I need my glasses to, to drive and to see anything past. Uh, well, any, I can see some things for, for about five to six feet, and then, and then uh, after that, it's, uh, well, it's, I can't see. All right, it's not, nothing's in focus. Yeah, 
And if you're going to do this, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're using, uh, I'm using Rust-Oleum's uh, paint and primer, and uh, get a mask. It smells. I'm just doing light passes. Sweeping right by the end and then releasing. Again, the paper's down so that I don't spray my cutting mat. And if there's overspray, I don't want to draw my calipers. Well, like I said, I'm going to uh, this dry and then I'm going to give it a second coat. Um, let's see if I can stand that one up there. Uh, oh there, there it will stand. block over and uh... so turn this upside down and spray it, clear the nozzle. So, with this done, now I have to leave it dry, obviously, and uh, just see what it says. Um, <coughs> drying time is 20 minutes, handle in an hour, fully dry in 24. So, I've got some time to wait. So while we're doing that, I'm just going to talk about one more thing and then we're, we're going to call it quits. I will have the uh, laser cutter um, time lapse at the end of this video. I'll just add it on and you can see it, see how the laser works. Um, it is a time lapse, it's a, I think in total it's like maybe 40, minute, 40 seconds, 50 seconds. The other one thing I want to talk about is, I thought I took one out. Okay, there you go. Doesn't matter. Oh, and I see I missed one. I had, uh, I have two of these. One of them doesn't have a fence in here, and the other does. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the preview. What happened there? Oops. Give me a sec. Switcher is not switching. Let's see if it does it now. There we go. So this is a pair of shears. And it's got a fence on it, which I, if I'd known they came with fences, I would have put it, bought just the one with a fence. What I went out and did was I bought a package of 40 quarter inch by quarter inch bamboo. Very strong, very stable, won't warp, very difficult to bend because all of these are going to have to be braced from the back because a lot of them, and you can tell on some when you look at them, there's a little bit of a curve. So I, next week oh, what we'll probably be doing is just bracing all of this stuff so that it's, it's, it stays together. Week after that probably start the build and, and, and go from there. So. I just want to show you how these work and you just put it on the uh, put it on the gutter bring the blade down and she just snips it off like that 
square trimmed easy you don't even don't really even have to sand it it's, it does it does such a wonderful job so I, and I, I completely missed one here guys so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to hold this one and spray and then find a place to put it. Now like I said I'm gonna do two coats of this. So by Saturday afternoon everything here should be uh, coated and, and ready to uh, to brace and I will do some of the bracing off camera and then um, some of the bracing off camera and uh, and just show you exactly what I've, do, I've got, got going. Um, the floor on the section where the track goes into the building um, this is it here it's a piece of heavy card uh, I don't want to call it MDF but it, it, it's it's super super stiff stuff anyway this is the floor and these pencil lines are where I'm going to cut into it and lay the track into the uh, into the floor itself so as it as the uh, freight car comes in it won't have uh, ties underneath it it'll have uh, have uh, a concrete around it so I'm going to cut this out on the laser and then uh, I'm going to lay the track in. I'm going to put a very thin piece of plastic underneath to shim it and uh, when that happens I'll show you how, it's, how, how we do this because I'm going to do I'm going to have all of this built before I actually put it in and then I'm just going to slide it in. I've got the track. The track, the track that's going inside the building is here and it's going to go right through there. So, <coughs> God that's, that's powerful. Oh, I definitely should have had a mask on. And uh, you wouldn't believe that I used to work at health and safety, did you? Would you? That's, <laughs> do as I do, don't, don't do as I say. <laughs> or is that the other way around? I can't remember. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching today. Um, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Um, take care of yourself, take care of your family. And... Uh, as always, remember it's your railroad and you can build it any way you want. So thanks and I'll see you next week.